York Harbor. She's losing light, and the tide is rising fast. So clearing the Verrazano Narrows Bridge is going to be a challenge. But she has the advantage of the most sophisticated marine technology in the world. The ship is propelled by four separate pods suspended from the hull, each with its own electric motor and propeller. They weigh 320 tons apiece as much as a fully loaded jumbo jet. Ship's starting to lift off, Waluigi. No fore and aft movement. The two forward pods are fixed, but the two at the stern, called azipods, are able to swivel 360 degrees. This allows the ship to steer without a rudder and maneuver without the help of tugboats. Together, the pods deliver a whopping 157,000 horsepower. The bow is starting to lead. We have two feet off. Control, James. Hi. OK. They're uh, taking thrusters now. To help turn the ship, the QM2 also uses three bow thrusters. Huge propellers concealed behind massive steel doors in the hull. They can churn out 13,000 horsepower, enough sideways thrust to spin the ship around in its own length. Everything is run from the bridge with a single controller, not much bigger than the joystick for a video game. As the big ship glides out of harbor, a pilot guide with an expert knowledge of the local waters helps the Commodore negotiate the channel. We've got the uh, Verrazano Bridge, of course, and the air draft of the ship tonight is 62 meters. Okay, well, we will aim for the middle of the bridge. Yeah. Middle of the bridge. Shall we have it? If the QM2 had left on time, her towering funnel would have cleared the Verrazano Bridge easily. But now, the tide is higher, and it's going to be tight. She must pass under the bridge dead center. The pilot speed is five knots. Now you're making good 244 over the ground. So you're currently carrying six degrees set to starboard, easing off slowly. If they miss the mark, it could cause serious damage to both the ship and the bridge. How close are you going to come up to? We'll do about 15. 15? Okay. Let's come up to 15 knots, please. The QM2 plows ahead at 50 knots, and she's not slowing down. We married to approaching the Narrows Bridge outbound. This is the moment of truth. She squeezes under the steel girders with just a few meters to spare. Now, there's nothing ahead but open sea. Commodore is the cut. Commodore is the cut. Queen Mary 2 cruises at nearly 27 knots. That's more than 50 kilometers an hour. The Commodore brings her up to speed and leaves the bridge to the officers on watch. Commodore Warner is responsible for everything and everybody on the ship. And as commander of the world's largest ocean liner, he's expected to be as much an ambassador as a mariner. I have to say the ladies look particularly glamorous this evening. In many ways, I suppose you could look upon my job as being uh, mayor of the city. But for all its grandeur and opulence, his city is still just a ship, a tiny cork on a vast ocean. And the passengers are about to get a sharp reminder that the North Atlantic can whip up seas as rough as any place on Earth. Come morning, the weather has taken a turn for the worse. 
The ship is crashing through six meter waves. Sometimes there are winds out here of 120 kilometers an hour and waves the size of a house. We are upon the greatest ocean liner in the world and there is no other ship that will ride weather better than this one. But um, the Atlantic generally doesn't look terribly spring-like at the moment. But Queen Mary II is not a cruise ship. She's an ocean liner with a sharp bow and a deep hull. She was built to be driven hard through the worst the sea can throw at her. Stephen Payne, the man who designed the QM2, knew there'd be days she'd take a beating. Good afternoon. So he perched her lifeboats high above the waterline, where even a rogue wave can't hurt them. And he shaped the bridge to protect her passenger decks. These balconies are so high up that they're certainly not vulnerable, and they're protected forward by the superstructure front. The balconies within the hull, instead of having the glass, they have a solid bulwark, so that protects them. So there's certainly no uh, vulnerability from having the balconies. The ship was designed to ensure the safety and comfort of her passengers and crew. But the rough weather has put tonight's stage performance in jeopardy. Yeah. Clive, what, what do you think? It's not good, is it? No, not really. I mean, this is worth the last week. Okay. The show tonight particularly is a challenge because it's a show where we use the orchestra pit, which means if the dancers are right near the edge of the stage, there's a 10 foot drop immediately in front of them. The bridge calls down to the engine room to try something to stabilize the ship and save the show. Hello, James. Hi. James. Uh, listen, we're going to come around a few degrees for this weather, so we're going to try and uh, continue to stabilize that for a few minutes, if that's okay with you. Start with four to stabilize. Okay. Thanks. In rough seas, the QM2 can deploy four folding fin stabilizers. They're like outriggers that extend from the sides of the hull to keep the ship from rolling from side to side. Okay. So all four stabilizers deployed now, James. Okay. Okay. Get a man on the wheel. Steering 074. 074. The bigger problem is the ship is pitching up and down, not just rolling from side to side, and the stabilizers can't help with that. Seem to be having a great deal of effect, is it? No, I think the pitch and motion is really staying the same. It's just not coming across these wells any better. And a very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Alastair Cruise Director again. Unfortunately, the motion of the ship does affect the performance of our shows featuring our singers and dancers. As a result, we have taken the decision to postpone this evening's performance of Rock and the Opera and we will endeavour to present them to you later on in the voyage. But most of the entertainment on board is weatherproof. Some passengers thrive on big seas, but for others, motion sickness can make ship life miserable. Hello, Michael Centre. And there's always the possibility the seasickness may be masking a much more serious problem, one that could threaten the health of everyone on board. <laughs>